Welcome back everybody. Quick video for you today. It's going to be a little less nerdy and a little more practical. I want to show you how I use the node REPL in my development workflow for JavaScript. First thing you need to know is that the REPL is available to you as long as you have node installed on your machine. All you have to do to enter into the REPL is type node in your terminal, hit enter, and boom, now we're in the REPL. As you can see, I'm using version 12.7.0. You'll be using whatever vo version of Node is installed on your machine when you type that in. Now, what is a REPL? It is REPL, which stands for the Reg Evaluate Print Loop. And that's very simple. It allows us to type in JavaScript, something like assigning the value Nathan to the variable name. And there is no return value from this expression. So when it is evaluated and printed out, we get undefined. But name is an expression that has a value. And if I hit enter on that, the printed result will be the value that it holds, which is the string Nathan. So this can be extremely useful if you are, or at least what I use it for, is when I'm working with the date constructor, I always forget how to use that. If I'm working with regex, it allows me to test things really quickly. And if I'm writing something like a transformation or a predicate function, doing some mapping, filtering, reducing, something like that, I find that it's really useful in that way. But it's one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize about the REPL is that you can actually import external libraries directly into the REPL. So I have Lodash installed in this project or in this directory. So I am able to require in from Lodash the is empty function. And I can show you that it's there by running it. And it works as we would expect. So then if I get something like A is A, that is not empty, so we get false. That's pretty handy. Uh, this means that you can use external library methods, functions, uh, things that you're using in your project directly in your REPL, so you don't have to copy and paste the source code or do anything funky like that. You can work with them directly in your REPL for quick testing, and it allows you to do things that would otherwise be very difficult if your project isn't set up well for test-driven development. But <laughs> it's not just external libraries that have been installed with NPM. You can actually import in your own exported values. So I have a, actually I'll hop right out of this for a moment and just show you. I have a file called run, and it is exporting nums and is odd. So let's require those in. Ugh, I type from run. And now we have nums and we have is odd. So let's just use is odd. Nums filter is odd. And we get the odd numbers back. So let's say that we were importing these in because we wanted to write an is even. That's obviously not something super difficult, but for the purpose of illustration, let's do it. If we test that, we get back the even numbers. Now we can say, okay, this is working the way we want it to. Let's copy and paste this implementation into our app, and then we can write some regression tests for it. That sort of thing. So the REPL is really useful in this way. But one big caveat is that you've probably noticed this entire time I've been using common JS import export syntax. ESM modules at the time of recording are not supported in the REPL. So I can't do import is empty. Uh, I guess I would need to destructure that, but is empty uh, from Lodash because it's not yet supported. But there is a GitHub issue open for this. And as far as I can tell, it is an intended behavior that will be supported at some point. So if I can find that issue again, I will link to it in the description and future viewers of this video can go check that out and check out the state of that entire project or the entire issue. I'm sure that'll develop over time and eventually at some point you will be able to import this directly. So a couple of caveats, but I still find this incredibly useful. I use this all the time. I also use the Python REPL as well. So highly recommend use, adding this to your development workflow if you don't already use these tools. But that is it for today. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something from it, 
Give me a like, let me know why you liked it. And if you didn't like it or didn't find it useful, let me know why and what you'd like to see from me in the future instead. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.